Today I'm going to be showing you how to change the pitch of any of the drums inside of the GarageBand Auto Drummer. It's a really easy trick to do. We're going to focus on the snare drum because me personally, that's always the drum that I want to change the tone of. So let's get right to it. So here we have the Auto Drummer track. Now what we want to do is pull out the individual drum that we want to change the pitch of, okay? So what we need to do first is create a software instrument track, right? So we're gonna do that here. We're now going to make sure that it's playing the same drum kit, right? So drum kit, and we're playing the SoCal kit. So there's that. Now we need to duplicate this one more time. So with a simple Command D, I'm gonna get another one of these and we will get to that a little bit later, okay? So now we're gonna come up here to the auto drummer track with a Command C. We're gonna copy the whole thing. Go down to the first of the duplicated tracks and this is V, Command V, and we're gonna paste it in. Now one thing that we have to work around is the fact that GarageBand humanizes these parts, right? So what I mean by that is that if we look at these individual MIDI notes down below, you will see they're not exactly on the grid, right? They're a little bit before, some are a little bit after. That's because, you know, GarageBand's awesome and it humanizes these parts, right? But we do have to work around this now uh, to make sure that we get everything where we want it, okay? So, what we need to do is grab this guy, we're gonna drag it all the way to the beginning of bar two. And now, and, and the reason I'm doing this, just so you can see specifically, is because these notes at the very top are actually a little bit ahead of the beat. It's, it's funny, but it's true, it's what it is. But it's very, very, very difficult to align these uh, if you don't do what I'm about to show you, okay? Really easily, I'm gonna zoom back out a little bit here. I'm just gonna grab the edge of this guy and I'm just gonna extend this back to the beginning of the grid, okay? Now we have something we can actually work with. So just remember to do this. The next thing I wanna do is simply copy and paste this particular track, right, down here. I'm gonna put it down here and I'm gonna V that in. Now, go back up to the second track identify the snare, which is this guy right here, in this case. And if you don't know, if you just hit these keys on the left-hand side of the little keyboard, it will select all of them, right? But now I can delete these, right? Now I'm coming back down to the third track that I've created, and I have all those snares there, but since that's the drum that I'm trying to change, I gotta get rid of everything else, right? Select them all, delete them all. Select all the kicks, delete them all. So now this track has no snare, right? And this one has only snare. Simple. Have you, are you keeping up? Are you keeping up? Okay, I'm trying to work fast. So the next thing we need to do is actually open a pitch shifter plugin, right? So there are a few in GarageBand. I will tell you, do not use this one for this trick, this one right here. It doesn't work, it always changes it. Uh, it's placement in the timeline for whatever reason. I can't tell you why. I haven't figured out why because the other ones don't do it. So what you do is come down here to audio units, up to Apple, and you're just looking for this one, AU Pitch, okay? This is a nice, easy one to use, and it's almost identical to the one that's in Logic. So, you know, it, these are the good plugins. These are the best plugins inside of GarageBand, if you ask me. These are of the stock stuff, these ones. Anyway, let's get it. AU Pitch, okay. Now we have this thing right here. And uh, we're simply going to pull this pitch control down as we listen. Cool, right? So let's unsolo this. So you can get a nice, you know, that dead drums sound going. Um, really, really awesome. I personally love sort of loose sounding snares for certain songs. It's just never underestimate the importance of a snare tone. It is really important. Like sometimes it, it creates like a nice moody sound or if you want it to be a little bit more high energy and poppy or like country, like really professional Nashville country, they're usually kind of high and ringy. I mean, that might be a little excessive, right? But you get the idea, right? And so you have all these other controls. We could blend the old snare in if we wanted to.
This is the stock sound. Right? So you can get a little bit more of like an overtone ring or anything like that. The smoothness control, it doesn't, you don't really hear it, I don't think. In this particular kind of a case, because it's not something that's changing uh, notes a lot, right? So uh, you can do whatever you want with this. The tightness. Right, and that, that's pretty, I think you can hear what it's doing there. It's just making it sort of a looser sound. Right, and it's, you gotta max them out to hear the difference. But in general, I usually don't even touch this one I and mean, we can just leave it at 50% and that's totally fine. Right. So what I personally like is lower pitched snares. Listen to that. That's like old school Ringo. In the mix. All right, so that's the snare. So I know I said I was only gonna do the snare, but for uh, demo purposes, let's actually just add the kick, just so you can hear what it does to the kick, because it is pretty awesome as well. So we're gonna do the same exact thing. We're gonna copy this guy right here. Command C, we're gonna come down here, back to the track header. We're gonna, boom, bang all that in there. Uh, paste it all in there and come up here and we're gonna get rid of everything that is not the kick. Okay, boom. Now we have only the kick here. Okay, uh, it would have been smart to duplicate the one with the pitch shifter on it, but anyway, we'll use this one. Okay, here we go. Okay, so there you go. There, now the snare is, or sorry, the kick is much more deep. Keeping in mind that the original kit sounded like this. Now it sounds like this. Super, super easy way to get new drum sounds out of the drum sounds you already have in GarageBand. Using this AU pitch control is the only pitch control that will do this in GarageBand, trust me. I've tried them all and this is the only one that does it easily. Everything else seems to change it you know, on the timeline. It's, it's you know, the, the attack is, is always changed. It's really weird. So anyway, point is AU pitch, uh, that's the good one to use. And uh, besides that, you guys have fun with this idea. It's really, really cool. And you know, there's like those dead drum kit sounds or you know, they keep like trying to sell them to me, at least on uh, Facebook and Instagram. They're like, dead drum, dead drums. And I'm like, yeah, I can already do that. I can make those sounds by myself inside of GarageBand and I don't have to buy anything. Uh, so that's awesome because it's all free and we all love free stuff, especially when we already own it. You don't have to download anything. So that's it, you guys. Have an awesome, awesome day. And uh, I will see you again next weekend with a big old review. All right, peace and love.